Hello and welcome to the Indian Cultural Forum. Uh, today we have with us Mridula Koshi. Mridula, thanks so much for uh, coming here to our office. Uh, we'll be discussing a few things. My first question to you, uh, Mridula, is uh, on the recent uh, protests at Lyft Fests, uh, where uh, individuals have said that uh, certain corporate houses, when they sponsor Lyft Fests, it, 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 there's a contradiction between what literature hopes or aims to do and and what it does when um, they certain writers participate in certain lit fests sponsored by certain corporates, uh, what would be uh, what is your take on that? I don't have necessarily a hard take because uh, there's a difference between having a personal take and an organized take. Um, so. As for me, if someone uh, raises the question with me, then I can answer it. If no one does because there's no opposition as such, then I just have my own uh, thinking about it, which is not shared very widely. It's just between me and my friends or just between me and my conscience um, and my politics. I mean, by conscience, I wasn't really speaking about uh, a moral conscience, but more of a political conscience. So yes, uh, the question was raised, for example, at the London um, Jaipur Festival, the JLA Festival at London, when a petition was circulated. And I thought for maybe half a second about career and things like that, and does it, does it even matter for me to sign it, or does it matter if I don't sign it? And I signed it. And um, hoped it would do some good. Largely, even the fact that uh, you know it did not get me disinvited from anything, as far as I know, um, I've been invited to the Jaipur Festival just really once, and that was this particular Jaipur Festival. And I went and attended the one in Jaipur, and that was post the petition. So, did somebody read the petition and see my name and invite me anyway, or? Do, does no one really care about these petitions? I, I don't really know the answer to that. But when you are asked to do something by an organization that you take leadership from, and I'm hungry for that, for leadership, for people to say, this matters, this is the line that shouldn't be crossed. Vedanta, you don't cross that line. Then I'm ready to, to, to not cross the line. If the question is not asked if there's not an organized movement saying this is the line, defining the line. It's much less meaningless, I think. Mm -hmm. All you have is perhaps the peace you have to make with yourself, which is in the wider world of change, mm -hmm. the kind of change we need, fairly also meaningless. perhaps ineffective, as a, it's a, yeah. maybe an ineffective politics. It's, it's ineffective politics. People, I, I think it bears saying that it's ineffective politics only because so often in our world people argue that it is about the individual person acting. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll go to a festival unless I'm told not to go to a festival is the answer. All right. Um, also, uh, la last year when uh, so many writers did um, return their Scythe Academy Awards or resign from posts. Uh, did or didn't? Did. Did, yes. Yeah. I also thought many did and it yeah. was very impressive. And yeah. it seemed to me to be an organized movement, although I wasn't really clear. I don't think people act together accidentally. Mm -hmm. I think most of the time someone is picking up the phone and calling and saying, I'm doing this, will you do it with me, at its simplest. Yeah. Um, and perhaps staying up later into the night and saying, where's the list of all the people we should be calling and asking mm -hmm. um, yeah, to act I mean, with us. It wasn't really an organized movement in the sense that, uh, yeah, it, it was an organized in the way that you explained it, that there were perhaps phone calls or maybe sometimes there weren't. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, there was a sense that things were happening together. There was definitely a sense of community, if not uh, so much of an official organization mm -hmm. working with the writers. But uh, my question is something else. Mm -hmm. uh, when, when the entire episode happened, there were just so many comments. And since uh, I was sort of trying to cover all of that, mm -hmm. there were two comments that really struck me. One was by a cultural critic, uh, whom I respect very much, but he, sa but he said that somehow the uh, younger writers have not participated as much as we would expect them. And there was another comment, which was perhaps, I don't know why, uh, by, by a very noted uh, Hindi poet, 
saying that uh, Indi uh, English writers generally do not uh, participate so much in matters of the nation. Uh, so you are you write in English and you are yeah. uh, from the younger writers. Uh, how how would you respond to both these critiques, even if you can call them critiques? It's not my sense that uh, writers writing in English, um, which is only one of the many regional languages in this country, but yes, it happens to be powerfully positioned because it's also the language of power in our country and in the world. But it's not my sense that we are particularly organized as a group, and that's why I would think you wouldn't have noticed. Um, I, I agree with the critic in as much as I too have not noticed uh, writers writing in English in India acting as a force for, you know, political change mm -hmm. um, or participating in the politics of the nation in that way. And yet I think in our own writing, um, there is some coherence around um, an investment in, um, in, in the politics of, of our times. Hmm? If it doesn't have force, it's not only because, as I said earlier, as a group we don't have an organization through which we act, whether it's existing political parties or social or cultural um, organizations, we don't really have that, I don't think. I wouldn't say that the literature festivals in which, we, uh, in which there's a circuit that we attend and so on act in that way. Um, that's more like a dog and pony show that we, and more about marketing than it is about anything else. It doesn't even take leadership on questions of literature, so much less politics. But I think individually I would uh, credit the handful of us writing in English with being interested and having a stake in what happens. And it shows in the literature we produce. Um, I don't know whether it's um, Manu Joseph's writing. I mean, and people will say good and bad things about it and so on. but. He's, he's invested, I think he's invested, and it shows. Or like Arvind Adiga, who's writing I don't even care much for, but I, he has a stake and he's expressing strong ideas about the politics of this country. Um, the caste system figures in a lot of our writing. Um, how we um, ask the question about what the caste system is doing right now people can agree or disagree with, but that we are engaged with the question is something I would want to say for mm -hmm. speaking for myself and describing what I see in the world I um, work in and write in. If it doesn't seem particularly powerful, you can't fault us for it because A, absent an organization and B, absent a rich uh, sort of uh, uh, richness of literature which five people or ten people writing cannot produce by themselves. We're a huge country and there's literally thousands of people not writing in English right now who should be, maybe tens of thousands. And, you know, I'm, I'm appalled that uh, people will point fingers and say, you didn't write that other book. Well, I have to spend about three years writing one book and then another three years writing the next. If I missed the thousand books that should have been written in that time that was not written, it's because I cannot do that, you know. Each of us sort of have our individual projects, and then the missing thousands of people who are not writing in India are the reason why we're missing the thousands of books that my book should be sitting next to. So when I, in my mental landscape, and when I look at Indian literature in English, what I see is like very, very empty shelves, and then like my book, not even able to stand up, sort of falling over because there are no books next to it. And way over there is, you know, Anuradha Roy and, um, you know, elsewhere is Anjum Hassan. Or These are my peers and um, we're so far away from each other because there are many books that were meant to be writ written, written between us um, and they don't exist. And that's a much bigger question about what's happening in the Indian curriculum, what's happening in the Indian education system, um, what Indian society allows a, a, a rather large section of its population um, in terms of participation in, um, in the thinking work of this country. So 
I, I mean, I think fortunately for us, if we don't despair, if I, I don't despair, it's because I am aware that there are livelier literature in other regional languages, in Indian, Marathi, or Malayalam. And to the extent that I can access that through English, I do. Since you, uh, since, since you already explained quite a bit, let me just uh, uh, specify some of the points that you made with respect to your own writing. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I think in one interview you did say that you thought of naming your first book, uh, if it is sweet, a collection mm -hmm. of short stories, class. Oh my god, that's so long ago, I don't yeah. remember saying that, but okay. Uh, yeah, I, I, I checked it in the morning today. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, but uh, I felt that that's really true because there were so many characters there that, that, that you deal with and you study them through very effective ways in which fiction can study certain spaces, like say Chirajuli or mm -hmm. certain, certain spaces which would be marked as marginalized spaces. And I'm sure it happens in other Indian languages as well. Mm -hmm. But it happens so much in your own writing. Mm -hmm. So my question to you is, how do you uh, see these characters around us, but all of us see them, but how, how, how do you manage to bring them to fiction? I mean, wh how, what are the literary devices? Mm -hmm. What are the choices that you make? Uh, so for example, um, Chirag Dili is a hard place to see. It's not only marginalized uh, in, in India, um, it's a small neighborhood in Delhi. It's a very old neighborhood, it's centuries old, um, perhaps 1300s and older. Um, so I live next door to it and I walk through it. And uh, you know, from childhood you're trained not to see it. So it's difficult to see it for that reason. It's difficult to see it because the people who live there you're trained to not see. It's also difficult to see it because when you sit down to write about it, there's not books written about it. So it becomes difficult to see because writing is a way of seeing. And if other people haven't allowed you to see it through writing, when you try to write it, it's difficult to see it enough to write it. And then if you're writing it to show it to somebody else, there's this other further struggle as a writer around. So, so you, need a, you need a lot of literature to write literature is one of the things I've slowly realized about um, my working life as a writer. Um, I wrote short fiction initially, not because I'm a housewife, which I was a parent who stayed home with her children um, when I was writing If It Is Sweet, starting in 2005, and I worked on it till 2008, and then it was published in 2009. I, um, I, I chose short fiction um, and the other uh, suggestion that has been made is, um, was I writing short fiction because of the short attention span of the reader today? And stuff. These, these are the very ridiculous questions. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, because the most, the most important reason you ch choose, you make choices in writing, you asked about how do you choose, you know, what do you do, the structure. In this case, the choice of form has to do with what you're trying to accomplish in your writing. I mean, I, at least most of the writers I know are not thinking about short attention spans or so on. Um, so I like short fiction because you can try the question again and again. And yes, to some extent, um, you're staking less. Um, uh, so, so if it didn't work, you can throw it away and then you can start again, you can write another story. It takes a few weeks to write a story, a few more weeks to rewrite it. So um, even the stories that worked only work because they're next to each other in the collection. So each story is, an, is a re-attempt to s try to see again. I want to see Chirag Dili, I want to see Chirag Dili. Say I'm not a writer, say I'm in Chirag Dili and suddenly I see it. Um, it's, it's searing or it's blinding, then I go back home and because I'm a writer, I'm not a um, something else, a, a, a painter or a um, school teacher, I might choose to do something with that moment of clarity that I've had, which has to do with trying to reproduce it in writing. In fact, that's what I do in writing. I experience something that I'm very invested in re-experiencing. I see something, I want to see it again. Especially because most of the time I can't see, because everything I see is based on what people have told me exists. I see based on expecting to see. If something pierces that and I realize that 
that there was all of this that I was told did not exist, then it, it makes me actually anxious. Um, here's a new truth or a new, new piece of relevant information. What does it mean that I haven't known it? Have I made decisions all along? Have we all made decisions all along that has excluded this important thing? So then I engage with that in literature. I try to see it. Um, luckily, the short story allows me to try again and again. Because if something's going to be difficult to see, you're going to have to try multiple times. Um, hopefully, you have lots of other people trying that. And that's not just writers. I talked about the missing books on the bookshelf of Indian writing in English. Um, luckily, we also have Indian readers in English. So part of what you're counting on is that the readers will tell you back if they saw it too. You're desperate that somebody should say, not that, oh, you're a great writer and I saw it because of you, but yes, I have seen this too, you know. So that's, that's what you hope for. As a kind of sharing of yeah, experience. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if, if I think that's what literature is trying to do, is um, bring readers and writers and the form and other writers and time. Mm -hmm. So all the books that have ever been written are also on that shelf. And none of it exists without anything else.